the image of God that should be in us, restored by the redemptive work of Jesus Christ and by the abiding Spirit of the Holy Ghost. You see, God only has one class for his people, only one, and that's holiness. I didn't write it. I like that verse in Math, uh, pardon me, in Hebrews, where it says that we, 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 on this earth, while we're here, as the hymn writer says, in this body pent, or tied up, we, while we're here on earth, are supposed to be as holy as Jesus Christ was when he was on earth. He didn't die to leave us moral cripples leaping around or staggering and falling and stumbling. The ordinary course of the Christian life is victory from morning to the time you get up to the time you go to bed. It isn't that we can't sin, it's that we don't want to sin. It's not that it's impossible to sin, it's possible not to sin. There's a big difference. And what Jesus Christ expects that you and I to be little Christ while we're here in this world reflecting the moral and spiritual glory of God in the face and not just our physical face but in our display to other people as they read us, as they see us. We don't need veils on our faces. We don't have enough glory. But it should be that the glory of God is reflected in our demeanor, in our actions, in our attitudes, in our personality. There's nothing more revolutionary than the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ made real in us, putting to death the old man and putting on the new man, and then being indwelt by the Spirit of God. That's not, that's not super, that's the normal Christian life. Again, it's not impossible to sin, it's possible not to sin. What a difference when Moses was there in the presence of God and God was angry. He came down livid with anger, so much so that he threw the stones down. And he broke the Ten Commandments. But in the next chapter, it's altogether different. He's a different Moses. When he comes down this time, his face isn't blood red with anger. His face is radiating a holy God. The reflection of eternity is in the face of the man. And the people are speechless at him. No wonder. You know, if we ever get into the fullness of the blessing, then the neighbors will wonder what in the world's wrong with us. I think about half a dozen going down a dark street one night, the street would light up. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but I'm hoping it will work anyhow. It should be that we change the atmosphere in any place that we go to. The Quakers used to say that. You remember that, dear brother? Dale? They used to say, a man is his own atmosphere. If you're on fire for God, you can go into a frozen atmosphere and it will change like that.